A Los Angeles woman is scheduled to stand trial next month for conspiring to murder her husband, celebrity hairdresser Fabio Cementilli. He was sitting by his pool, his swimming pool, when he was brutally stabbed to death. And prosecutors say his wife, Monica, was secretly having an affair with the killer. She says she had nothing to do with her husband's murder. Correspondent Michelle Miller has more. On January 23rd, 2017, beauty executive Fabio Cimentilli was stabbed to death by his pool in Woodland Hills, an upscale Los Angeles suburb. His then 16-year-old daughter, Isabella, found his body. It looked like a textbook break-in, a robbery gone wrong. Mary Fulgeniti is a CBS News consultant. She says police had one good clue. A neighbor's camera caught two hooded figures near the house. And later, those same figures making their escape in Simantilli's black Porsche. The crime seemed to go unsolved for months, but secretly, detectives had a lead. They discovered DNA at the bloody scene, DNA that led them to this racquetball instructor, Robert Baker. Investigators say he was having an affair with Fabio's wife, Monica Simantilli. You can see him here with Monica at the wake for Fabio. On his finger, a bandage. Investigators say he cut himself when he stabbed Fabio. In court filings, prosecutors say Monica had shared the password for her home security system with Baker. Both she and Baker were arrested and pleaded not guilty. But in July 2023, Robert Baker changed his plea. Robert Baker pleads no contest, and that's in essence accepting responsibility for the murders. He's ultimately sentenced to life without parole. Two weeks ago, 48 Hours went to visit Baker in jail. He told us Monica had nothing to do with the murder, and she never knew he was the killer. Still, most of Fabio's family has turned against Monica, but the daughter she shared with Fabio are supporting her. We will continue to stand by our mother as we have done, and we will fight for her innocence. Joining us now for more on this is CBS News national correspondent Michelle Miller. Uh, Michelle, I told you back at CBS Mornings that this story was crazy. Uh, it, Robert Baker is saying that he did this murder alone. Is he taking the fall for Monica? Oh, that is the big question. But we should know that he was not alone when he entered the Simantelli house. There's video so from surveillance cameras uh, from neighbors' homes that clearly show a second suspect that went into the home. So the issue is, the question is, who was that second suspect? Mm. We know that it was not Monica Simantelli because at the time of the murder, that hour or so uh, that the two people were inside the home. Uh, she was at a Target store some 10 minutes away. There, there is uh, surveillance footage of her in the store. So while she uh, has an alibi, the, Robert Baker has yet to come forward on who that second person uh, or his accomplice was. Mm. But the big question is, will he come forward to testify during her trial? Do we have any idea? Uh, we spoke with him last Saturday. He says he has yet to decide that. Mm. Uh, and pro the prosecution clearly does not want him to testify. Uh, in fact, they are trying to get any testimony or his ability to testify thrown out. Um, but the big question is, why would he want to? Uh, he doesn't get anything out of it. He pled no contest. He is serving a life sentence without the possibility of parole. No deal's been cut. And quite frankly, the prosecution says, you know, he isn't giving up that second person. That's what we want. And as long as he doesn't do it, you know, why should we allow him to testify? Mm -hmm. So getting that surveillance tape of those two individuals running near Fabio's house was a huge break for the police, as you know. Um, uh, and, and we're not sure. We, they, the police don't have any leads, you're telling us, Michelle Miller, on who that other person is. Right. Mm. All right. right. That's it a certainly tease. sets up the timeline of the murder. But as far as the who, uh, still 
still a big mystery. Wow, look so at that. It's I, so clear. I, I mean, know. You, you look at it and you're like, they should be able to figure this right. out. And in a neighborhood like that, you'd think there were surveillance cameras all over the place. This is a high-end neighborhood. <laughs> I went to that neighborhood. They'd find me real and quick. And there were. <laughs> so there you so that brings you thought that was a tease and it is this is a great hour but there was even more information that we talked about during the post-mortem podcast Ooh, that, which yes. is going to drop on tuesday because a bunch of information was just released as uh, prosecutors prepare that didn't for make this it other into the episode. it couldn't because it was oh, just yes. released yeah okay. so okay. yeah so michelle and, and the you producer know what that that was yeah, no, 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 uh, Anne Marie. The, all of that information that we gave you in the post postmortem, uh, both Craig Fisher and I gave you in the postmortem, is not in tomorrow night's hour. So it is fresh information because it came to us two nights ago. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but evidence, uh, evidence that has been placed uh, uh, into court filings that will likely be, or depending on what the judge decides, that, that may be a trial come April 2nd. Right. So, wow. listen in, tune in. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So you've got to okay. watch 48, 48 Hours 48 on Saturday, on Saturday and then on Tuesday, listen to the head to the 48 Hours podcast so you can listen to Postmortem. All right. <laughs> uh, Michelle and Anne-Marie, uh, thank you very much. Michelle, as always, an incredible report. We'll look forward to it on Saturday.